No, not by far. But I was able to push this weird laptop tablet hybrid from 2015 further than I imagined. Stay tuned to the end to see what's possible. Ah, uh, the Surface Pro. We're in 2022 and they are still making these things. Back in 2015, I was dumbfounded seeing the alleged capabilities of this laptop. Tablet? Borke no los dos. Seeing that I could have a portable laptop with touchscreen capabilities that could easily turn into a drawing pad, a presentation machine, the possibilities were probably endless, I thought to myself. It came out just in time because that Christmas, I was in the market for a school laptop. High school me thought that this would be the perfect all-around device to take care of all of my needs. Boy, was I wrong. This thing is easily the worst piece of tech I've ever owned. So here's the story. High school Julian was working on an important final just a month after getting the Surface Pro. It's the night before at 12 a.m. and then the Surface Pro just shuts off. It stops taking a charge from the charger and will not turn back on. So I skip school the next day and take it to Geek Squad at the Best Buy that it was purchased from. They say, oh, it's probably a faulty charger. Here's a new one. I take it home, it doesn't charge. I bring it back, the Geek Squad guy just says, Oh yeah, right. Some of the Surface Pros just do that. What do you mean by just do that? Yeah, it had this issue where they just stop working. Really? Yeah, the best we can do is just give you a new one. So they couldn't recover any of my important school documents, but they did hand me a brand new one in the box and let me take it home, no questions asked. But wait, it gets better. Not more than a week later, the new Surface Pro does it again. So I take it back to Geek Squad and tell them what happened. And you'll never guess what they did. They gave me another one, new, in the box, no questions asked. And that, my friends, is the one I have to this day. I have lucked out and it has not randomly shut down forever. Again, this is the worst piece of technology I've ever owned. It barely runs Microsoft Word without overheating. Photoshop lags on it. The tablet mode UI is so backwards that I refuse to use it without the keyboard attachment. And much, much more. So let's try to run Switch games on it. Wait, 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 slow down. First, I would like to take this thing through the ultimate benchmark to see, truly, how good of an emulation machine can we get? We're going to start emulating the oldest games and work up to the newest possible without frying it, fingers crossed. I've also gone the extra step and put Joy-Con railings on the sides to enhance the ultimate emulator feel. If you didn't know, new versions of Windows will accept Joy-Cons through Bluetooth connection. That, along with a program called Better Joy that takes the inputs from the Joy-Cons and converts them into an Xbox 360 output, make for a relatively seamless gaming experience. And for those of you who care, here are the specs on the Surface Pro 4. There are many ways to organize this, but I thought it would be best to simply go in order from oldest generation to newest. I'm using RetroArch for the majority of these games, but you'll find details on the screen in the description about emulators used in this video. Yep, runs just fine. I would be worried if it didn't. Yes, very weird that it locked at 50 frames, but I'm not entirely sure how accurate this counter is, especially in the clips later. Yes, perfect 60 frames. Yes, however, I initially loaded Sonic with the Genesis Plus GX wide core, which caused a graphical error to the right and to the bottom parts of the screen. Loading up the regular Genesis Plus GX core proved to fix that. I won't go too in-depth on cores, since I will have information about RetroArch linked in the description. But cores are simply a way that the program integrates different emulators, since RetroArch is mainly a program that puts everything in one place rather than a specific emulator. Our first handheld on the list. It runs great. I did not get a chance to include a Game Boy Color game on the list, but it also presumably runs very well. All right, so this is where we start to run into some issues. Nintendo 64 games run great, however, this is where you'll begin to notice input lag on the Switch Joy-Cons. I'm not sure if this is an issue with the connections of the Joy-Cons via Bluetooth, or the Better Joy app, or both. Oh, oh no. Yeah, this one is bad. Do not be fooled. This game is not running at 60 frames a second. For some reason, PlayStation games do not run well on this device. Although, they really should. We should not be having problems this early. I believe it's probably the 4 gigabytes of RAM. This is not a good sign going forward. Yeah, not so good. I feel like I'm running through Jello. Definitely not 60 frames per second. The input lag is also insane. I'm growing ever more concerned with the rest of our testing. Shockingly great. Dolphin is just consistently good, and this shows it. Mario Kart Double Dash works flawlessly, other than very occasional frame skipping. <sighs> frame skipping galore, and we have the return of Jello movement. I feel as though my movement is just so incredibly slow, and these issues are just so immense that it becomes unplayable. I don't have high hopes for PlayStation going forward. <laughs> the emulator won't even open a game. I tried multiple times and failed to get past the startup screen. I fear the end is near. 
take back all my lost hopes. This is what the entire project was made for, and I had not realized it until this moment. You can rotate the screen once in tablet mode. Of course, you might want to find a way to prop it up, but just look how beautiful and full the screen is when playing DS games. I almost think that this would be my preferred way to play it above the original system itself. It's large, and you don't have to deal with awkward sizing issues that come with emulating the clamshell two-screen design. Surprisingly, it was playable. The input lag ruined the experience, but I believe if you just use a regular Xbox or PlayStation controller, then it could work. It might also help to purchase a large tablet gaming controller if you want to preserve that portable aesthetic. The Joy-Cons just aren't the best option. Yes, very playable. I was surprised that Better Joy has an option to output motion controls. You set up a local server that sends out the data and Dolphin has the option to receive it. And for that reason alone, I think that makes this setup viable. Again, terrible input lag, so I'm not unbelievably sold, but it was much better than I expected. Yeah, this is unplayable. I could barely get the game running before having the entire thing overheat and crash. I was actually scared the first time it crashed that I'd kill the entire thing. Luckily, I didn't. Are you surprised? Unplayable. It was somehow more playable than the original Xbox, which did surprise me. Nevertheless, dreaded jello movement leading to a cool one frame a second at best. I really wanted this to work like the original DS did. Of course, the screen fills up nice, but that's all it has going for it. It struggles to get any playable frame rate and, like many others in this list, runs far too slow. Sad to say, it's unplayable. Bold of me to assume that you could play Breath of the Wild, I know, but something in me just hoped that it would work. I tried other games and Breath of the Wild was actually one of the only games I could get past the menu screen. Barely. So, at the moment, I am unable to find any known PS4 emulators. This is because, to my knowledge, it is an incredibly hard system to emulate. Also, no known Xbox One emulators, but I do have a solve for this. I have a copy of Little Nightmares, which I happen to play for the first time on the Xbox One. And since Microsoft bridges a lot of that gap, I would call that pretty even. Little Nightmares ran well enough, but it was just still incredibly slow. I would deem that probably unplayable. However, in most cases, I don't even think you could get a AAA game past the title screen with this. As for the next-gen consoles, right now there are only emulators for the Switch. Ryujinx and Yuzu, both of which I was unable to get to run at all, unfortunately. I was hoping I could maybe once and for all kill this Frankenstein of a machine, but it goes on to live another day. So that's the grand results. I was quite shocked to find that I could run systems as new as the Wii, but I couldn't get the original PlayStation above four frames a second. In any case, let me know in the comments if this is a viable way to upcycle this piece of junk, and I will see you in the next video.